Hey everybody, it's Charlie. Happy Comic-Con week. They just dropped another Aquaman preview with the actors and the director talking about the movie, explaining the characters, some of the backstory, where it fits into the DC universe, and how they incorporated the comics. So we gotta break all this down. If you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the Comic-Con videos. Even though this is Aquaman, I'll do a new round of the Flash Ring giveaway. It would normally be movie tickets, but the movie's not coming out till December. So all you have to do to enter that is be a subscriber, leave a comment on the video. The big thing first, this takes place after the events of Justice League. I think everybody assumed that. It's still a shared movie universe, but the movie itself is meant to be self-contained. So if there are any post credit stingers or any tags that set up other DC movies, it's only going to be for the Aquaman sequel. So it's not like they're going to be trying to set up Man of Steel 2 or the next Wonder Woman movie or Shazam or the Flash movie. I think everybody assumed that they weren't going to be setting up the next Batman movie just because that's supposed to be a prequel. The way they describe the tone and the feel of the movie is Raiders of the Lost Ark meets Romancing the Stone. So they say that it's not any kind of like romantic comedy or anything like that. But in the way that Raiders of the Lost Ark is this big swashbuckling adventure, that's mostly what the film is. James Wan, the director, is mostly known for his horror films like The Conjuring franchise, The Saw films. When they go to Trench, he says they went full creature from the Black Lagoon. And he did explain some of the technicalities in the mythology. So the reason why Aquaman is so strong and why Atlanteans in general are much stronger than humans is because their bodies have evolved to survive at that pressure depth. So like Black Manta, who's a normal human, has to wear that special pressure suit. They also explained the origin of Black Manta too within the DCEU. They do Aquaman's origin story through flashbacks, but they're also doing a version of Black Manta's origin story. So if you have an idea for what Aquaman was doing before the events of Justice League, before Batman tracked him down, he was just taking down pirates, but the people of Atlantis didn't want him, the surface world didn't want him, so he was just kind of blowing around the ocean by himself, a loner, trying to take down pirates. Black Manta's father appears in the film. When the film picks up, they're pirates. He develops a special relationship with Ocean Master. I'll explain why in a second, but it's pretty self-evident. So Black Manta's big mission during the film, he's a minor character, but a relatively important one, is that he just wants to kill Aquaman. They explain that he doesn't want to take over the world. He doesn't have grand ambitions. He's just out for revenge. They didn't say exactly why, but I think it's pretty easy to guess. If his father is in the film and he and his father are both pirates, Aquaman hates pirates, at some point before the events of Batman v Superman or Justice League, Aquaman probably took down their pirate vessel and wound up killing Black Manta's father. They did say that Black Manta would have two different comic book costumes, so I'm assuming that he's just going to streamline what his eventual special comic book helmet looks like. The funny thing too is that James Wan said, oh, we'll let you know why the eyes are red. It's not just to make it look cool, but if you've read the comics or you've watched Young Justice, you know that they give off energy blasts. Three minutes to departure. So the thing about Aquaman too is they said they didn't want to make him just like Superman because aside from his ability to talk to fish and his abilities when he's in water, he does feel a lot like the Superman character in the comics at times. So the way they explain Aquaman's powers is that just as an Atlantean, he has a naturally enhanced physiology that's evolved to live at that depth. What that translates to is a very Luke Cage type of explainer. So his skin is very resilient, like his muscles will stop bullets, but bullets can penetrate his skin. So it sounds like what'll happen is, is there'll either be flashback scenes or there'll be an action scene on land where a bunch of people try to shoot him and bullets don't bounce off of him like they bounce off of Superman. They just stop dead in him, so they sting a little bit and piss him off. But the only weapons that can actually legitimately hurt him are Atlantean weapons. But remember, Ocean Master is trying to take over the seven different kingdoms. He's trying to unite the seven against the surface world during the movie. So Ocean Master has everything he needs to take down Aquaman. Because like I said, remember, there's a Raiders of the Lost Ark element to the film. So we're trying to unite the seven different kingdoms of Atlantis. It sunk about 5,000 years ago. They say collectively before Atlantis sank, there were about 50 million people living in the seven different kingdoms. Los Angeles was the reference point that they used. So imagine that Los Angeles is like a minor city inside this giant nation of Atlantis. 
but they only say what five of the seven kingdoms are. So obviously it's Atlantis, Zebel, Trench, Brine. They call one the Fisherman Kingdom. We got a preview for them a couple days ago. This is what they look like. They're fully mer people, but they're meant to be highly evolved compared to the Atlanteans. So like I've said, they've all evolved to live at that depth, but these people have evolved even more than that to survive underwater but they still haven't said what the other three different kingdoms are. So some of the names of these different seven kingdoms are different from what they are in the comics. I think I've said before that they're pulling from Jeff John's New 52 Unite the Seven comic book story, but they say it's not a direct adaptation of that. But if you didn't read that New 52 story, the original king of Atlantis, Aquaman's ancestor, King Atlan, was a big character. So I'm guessing Raiders of the Lost Ark style, both Aquaman and Ocean Master trying to unite the seven for different reasons are probably looking for artifacts that belong to King Atlan that will help them unite the seven different kingdoms. Small detail, but a pretty big deal. They confirm that the Quindant that he wields during Justice League is not meant to be the iconic comic book Trident, which he will wield by the end of the movie. The teaser picture that James Wan released is actually right out of the comics. It's just a picture of Aquaman in his full comic book armor raising up this army of sharks. Obviously, there's the army of sharks coming in the poster. This picture here seems like it's either a big flashback to King Atlan or it's actually coming from towards the end of the film when Aquaman gets his comic book armor. You've seen him in the Batman v Superman armor. You saw him in his Justice League armor, which belonged to the King Atlan that Zack Snyder envisioned. This guy during that Justice League flashback sequence is meant to be the original King of Atlantis. So that's why Aquaman is wearing his armor in present day during the film. But then on set, we've seen him in chitinous armor. So it looks like he gets a change here. But by the end of the film, they did say that he would get his orange and green comic book armor. They didn't explain how that's going to happen. But I'm guessing that this teaser picture here that James Wan tweeted out a little while ago is what it's actually going to look like. But I'm sure there's a thousand other questions. They're going to drop the full trailer Saturday morning. So of course I'll do a video for that and we'll do whatever follow-up videos we need to do. But just in general, everybody that visited the set was pretty hype about what was going on compared to Justice League. James Wan did say that one of the big sticking points for him actually taking the project and doing the Aquaman movie was that Warner Brothers would totally let him do his own thing. So he was never going to be doing the same thing that Zack Snyder or any of the other DC filmmakers were going to do. So it is meant to look and feel very different from all the other DC movies. So it's not going to be like Wonder Woman. It's not going to be like Justice League or Batman v Superman or any of the Zack Snyder stuff. So I think that is all to its benefit. So whatever ends up happening, it will totally be on James Wan. I do have a lot of faith in him. I'm really a big fan of his horror films. So I'm excited to see how he incorporates that into this. But post all your theories in the comments below. Let me know if there's any special requests you have from Comic-Con. I'll remind everyone about the video schedule as we move forward. And as long as you have alerts enabled for my channel, you'll see all the videos, so no worries. While you wait for everything, click here for brand new Avengers 4 and Ant-Man and the Wasp. And click here to watch Tom Holland give away some of the plot of Avengers 4. It's actually pretty great. Thank you so much for watching. Everybody stay awesome. I'll see you guys tonight.